Okay, we're going to talk some rumors. And we're going to start with some things that pretty much only got mentioned once. And we're going to go into things that have been mentioned pretty much from the get-go. Now, we'll start off with the big rumor that started everything off was, of course, something I've said on many videos that the gentleman that played the Grinch at Grinchmas last year was given a contract by Universal to play Jack the Clown in a new show at Halloween Horror Nights this year. Now, why would they use Jack the Clown? Number one, Jack the Clown is pretty much the icon when it comes to Halloween Horror Nights, and we haven't seen him for many years. As a matter of fact, people that doubt his popularity need to pay attention just how fast it took to sell out of the Uni Mini and the Uni Mini pin of Jack the Clown that were released last year during the event. So much so that I'm pretty sure that for every year from now on, we're going to have a Uni Mini and a Uni Mini pin of a previous icon that is going to be available for purchase <laughs> as long as supplies last during the event. And that's what I think will be the right direction to go with that. Now, the question is, will we see Jack the Clown in 2014? My answer to this, actually, I'm going to go with no. I don't think we see Jack the Clown this year. And here's the reason why. I think that there is a possibility that this show we're talking about could, could, could be the second show that they're talking about in the actual text that's on the HalloweenHorrorNights.com website. But then again, the thing that jumps to mind immediately is there's two shows. Bill and Ted is obviously the first show. The second show, it's up to interpretation. Especially with some more rumors that Rocky Horror is not coming back this year. I don't know for a fact, but I'm going to say that I'm pretty sure that Rocky Horror is going to be the second show. This negates Jack the Clown at the event this year. Two, I've also talked about this horror homecoming. Now, I don't know anything more than just I'm thinking speculation. We're thinking of an anniversary year. And I think that next year is going to be the horror homecoming that is going to bring the former icons and even never were icons back to the event in a very original year that, of course, in my mind, will be spearheaded by the debut of John Carpenter's Halloween next year, which I think will be what will happen. There's a couple of other things I'm thinking about right now, but I'll talk to that as we progress in this video. Now, Jack the Clown would fit two potential IPs that would be coming to the event. Now, there was an announcement recently that the next season of American Horror Story is going to be called Freak Show. Well, this obviously fits Jack the Clown. And obviously, another thing is an IP that they've been talking about doing for quite a while, and that is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Since they've had such success in Hollywood with the clown scare zones, you would think there'd be something like that here in Orlando. But, I don't think this is the year. I already talked about the street experiences. I think it's The Purge this year, and I think that actually would be the direction I would go if it was personally me doing it. It worked in Hollywood. I think it would work really well in the entire park. If they're going to do a street experience that's going to go all over the entire park, kind of like The Walking Dead last year, I would say that The Purge would be what we'd use this year. I guarantee The Purge is coming to Orlando this year. Now... I know I've said that before, and I've said I've guaranteed a lot of other things that probably won't happen now. I'm looking at you, Insidious and the Conjuring. But I got a reason for Insidious and the Conjuring not to come this year. Uh, if we do get Insidious, I think they wait until the next movie comes out. I think with Annabelle coming out and Conjuring 2 coming out, I think that we're going to wait a little bit on that house. And I think that even though there was a... I just shudder thinking about it. But Sinister 2 is coming out, and there is a possibility that would be when we would get Sinister. If you want to talk about current IPs for current movies, 
for the next year or so. So that's why I'm saying there's no Jack the Clown this year. I think Jack the Clown will come back. I think he will come back, come back with a vengeance in 2015. And he will bring a lot of the former icons and maybe potentially never were icons. We could possibly see some icons we've never seen before in the way they were supposed to be, not just in a scare zone, or like an easter egg in a house. Oh no, we're actually going to get them on stage, front and center, in a house of their own. So I think we're very original heavy next year. I really do. So there's also a rumor that we're not getting The Walking Dead this year. Well, you know, I don't think that The Walking Dead is going to bow out of Halloween Horror Nights without one last hurrah. And I think that this is probably going to be it. I know I've said numerous times, we started out in the disaster queue, then we went to the parade building. I think the way to end it all is going to be a soundstage. I think Walking Dead has definitely outgrown a sprung tent, so it's not going to run the uh, gauntlet. I think that that's going to be what does happen. Do I think we see American Horror Story this year? I would say no. I would say you have... Potential four seasons to work with. So why not save that for another year? Where, whether it's going to be next year or whether it's going to be in 2016. I think American Horror Story will come to the event. I don't think it's this year. Okay. Here's another rumor that I'm hearing. Well, you know, there's some like whispers right now about this email that was sent out. I've seen the text, and it was quickly deleted, so take that for what you will. Whether the fact that it's a massive hoax, or somebody has gotten a little too close and may have just stumbled upon something legitimate. When it comes to rumors, obviously you never know which one's which, right? So, I'm going to throw this little tidbit of information out to you guys. Now, the official website was updated. And it was updated with the events of this year's event. The dates of this year's event, not the events of this year's event, because that's not possible. Not yet, at least. And we are finding out that the first night for Halloween Horror Nights 24 is going to be September 19th. I will be there, of course, for opening night. And the six nights right after that. And we'll be ending on November 1st. As a matter of fact, I believe this is one of the long... This is legitimately one of the longest, if not the longest event nights, like night per night, that we've had in Halloween Horror Nights history. Now, and forgive me if I'm wrong about that, because obviously I'm new to this, so I'm kind of just going with what I've heard. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can do at this point. Now, I will say that this started something, but it got quickly snuffed out, got quickly like swept under the rug. Now, there's a wonderful question, why? Why did this get swept under the rug? Maybe it's too out there. Maybe they know, oh, it's a work, there's no way, it's legit. Well, or maybe somebody figured something out and they wanted to just, like, yeah, get, get that away because we don't want that getting out yet. Here's what I read. Now, according to the HalloweenHorrorNights.com website, the official text is as followed. And it's at the very bottom here. It says, You'll be immersed in the worlds of the biggest names in horror as you explore eight terrifying haunted houses. We actually have officially eight houses this year. Make your way through multiple street experiences, which pretty much negates the fact that The Purge is the official street experience. It could be one of them, though. I'm sure it will be. Where creatures lurk around every turn. Hmm, I wonder what that means. Enjoy outrageous live shows... And it doesn't say a number of live shows here on this. Not there, but at the very top, there's actually a list that says two outrageous live shows. So that pretty much just lays it out right there on the line. And it also says multiple spine-chilling street experiences. So that means it's going to be one of many street experiences is The Purge. And I'd say that means we actually might get scare zones this year. Or maybe not named scare zones, but different areas throughout the entire park. They're going to have different ghouls and ghosts and creepies and crawlies and monsters and mayhem around every single corner. There will be no escape, literally. 
It says you will experience many of the park's most exciting rides and attractions. Will Diagon Alley be open for the event? That remains to be seen, but if it is, I don't think it's going to be used at all. Maybe somewhere down the line we'll get a Jack the Ripper scare zone. But until then, I think that that's going to be, again, something that's kind of off limits. Kind of like how we do with the, uh, mm, excuse me, with the Wizarding World of Harry Potter over at IOA, as well as Seuss Landing, which really doesn't have much of anything when the event is at Islands of Adventure. Now, here's what was quickly soaked under the rug. Now, granted, I'm not trying to state this as a fact. I'm not even saying that I'm necessarily believing any of it. But I'm going to say that I guess it's my job as a Halloween Horror Nights updater. Not an official Halloween Horror Nights. Not part of the Halloween Horror Nights updaters. Those guys are awesome. Check them out on YouTube. They're all my friends. They're all cool. And I can't wait to see you all at the event. But as an updater of Halloween Horror Nights, in this case... I want to mention not only speculation, but I want to go into rumors. And, you know, this is a big rumor. And it kind of got swept under the rug, so here's why. Now, the first thing it said is the text. And this was an email, apparently, someone got that he got from somebody that may or may not work for the event or work for Universal or may just be somebody that knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who got this passed to them. And in their inbox, it was the same exact thing, but there's a couple of things that were added that are not on the main page. Mainly this. They listed some of the IPs. And it's interesting because you're listing four IPs. I'm going to throw this out. There's four IPs listed. Out of the four IPs, there's one that is something that everybody has been saying is going to happen, and it's pretty much a guarantee. There's two that right now are being bandied about with all the Horror Nights updaters, including myself, as two shared IPs with Hollywood this year that are major, major markout mazes and houses that are going to completely make everybody happy, both the general public and the Horror Nights fans. And then there's one that's kind of out there, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, and also could open up the doors for something else coming up down the line. So, I'm being a little cryptic, but I'm going to throw that out there. Let's just say that this list which is the same thing I said, you'll be immersed in the worlds of the biggest names in horror as you explore eight terrifying haunted houses. I don't remember the exact words verbatim because I saw this once, went to work, it was gone that day. As a matter of fact, it was probably gone like seconds after I left with my look. So I don't have this actually here. But I'm just going to throw this out as a rumor, in a rumor only. This is speculation on a rumor. So yeah, this is all kinds of wrong in every single way. But... If it's true, then somebody found the right information and may have stumbled upon something that probably shouldn't have gotten out yet. They're listing a new Resident Evil house, not based on a video game, but based on the movie Retribution from 2012. The Mia Jovovich, uh, Paul W.S. Anderson movie. Kind of going the completely opposite direction. And instead of using the video game, they're going to use the movie instead. So, the ideas of a video game house involving Resident Evil that everybody dislikes so much, completely flipped. And they're going to do the movie. That would be my speculation for this. Two, I'll talk about the big markout houses that everybody wants to see, and that's The Shining and The Exorcist. Now, I know a lot of people are saying it's probably so many red tape and brick walls and all this issue, Stephen King himself, just to get these properties, King's property in general, to get it at Halloween Horror Nights has been, let's just say, something that's not been a possibility. Maybe this year it finally happened. And I said speculation when John Murdy threw out his code words, and both of them fit. And I would love to see both houses brought as a dual IP 
with Hollywood. And I guarantee you, if they get The Exorcist and The Shining as IPs, they're going to be dual IPs. I see no reason why not. And then there was the curveball that made me think that there may be something more to this. And they threw out Predator. Predator? The Schwarzenegger flick from 87? Yeah. Predator, of course, would potentially lead us to maybe opening up the doors to bring in something big, which is Alien, and that would equal out to another freak-out house somewhere down the line where we would be able to see a house, Alien, versus Predator. <clears throat> That's what I'm thinking possibly could happen. So, this rumor has... Predator, The Shining, The Exorcist, and Resident Evil Retribution. That's four houses. Add an Urban Legends house in a sprung tent. Put The Walking Dead in a soundstage. We bring Nightingales back in Disaster Queue. Shout out to Charles for coming up with that idea, because it's a brilliant idea. And, there's one more house left. Remember that page we saw right at the very beginning about the first, like, jumbled message we saw from Halloween Horror Nights 24, and we didn't know what it was? What if that's the final house? And it could go one of two ways. Orlando United thinks there's going to be an icon this year. I think it's possible. And that may be our icon house, if that's the direction we go. Or maybe this is just a completely 100% original property, has nothing to do with Hollywood, has nothing to do with an IP, or even based on anything. This would be the final house of the event. What if this is true? Maybe it's not. It's probably not, but you know, it's a rumor. A rumor in every single way that needs to be talked about, because no one's doing it. So I'm going to be the one that takes the reins and says, you know what, I'm going to talk about the thing that probably people should say, yeah, oh, and you probably shouldn't talk about that. Well, you know, it's a really good possibility. Because you have... Four IPs that are listed in this text, which possibly could come to the event. One of which we thought would happen, but we thought it'd be a video game. They swished it and made it the movie. Two of which are freak-out properties that Hollywood has been talking about, potentially, via John Murdy's cryptic comments. And one is something that almost no one has mentioned. It has been mentioned, but not very often. You take the Nightingale's house that they're talking about doing, the sequel house that everybody wants that they were talking about in line with Horror Nights last year. I know, because I was in those conversations. You have the Urban Legends brand with the second house. And then you have the original house, completely original house. And the final IP would be The Walking Dead in a soundstage. That's the event. If that were to be true, that's the event and someone stumbled onto something. Now, that'd be a big deal if that actually happens. Whether it's true, I guess we'll find out when we find out. April 1st isn't that many days away, and we'll find out what's going on in Dr. Jimmy's annual April Fool's video. Which, there's always a little bit of truth in the work. Always is. You just gotta be able to read between the lines. Now, I would say that I I can't really say at this point. I don't really know if this would be the IPs for the event. And there's still not a guarantee The Walking Dead's coming back. But I'm thinking that they are going to come back one more year and it's going to be in a soundstage. The thing about that is, I also think that AMC is going to run The Walking Dead until the well runs dry. And Universal is probably going to stick with it because 
as much as the fans were not the biggest fan of it, but not intended, I would say that the general public were very happy with it. Being around every corner, maybe not so much, but the general public are not really mostly caring about backstory and scare zone, well, scare zones and street experiences that involve the same exact thing just from different seasons of the same show. They don't care about Overkill. I saw those lines last year. They were bad. So, the general public still can bring The Walking Dead back, and I think that probably will happen. I definitely see it coming back to Hollywood, for sure. But, Predator? The Shining? The Exorcist? We've called two, th two out of three of these. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. We'll have to see. So, uh, finally, last but certainly not least, I do want to say um, I'm really intrigued at the event this year. It's going to be interesting to see what we do actually get. And when these rumors and speculation become actual truths, and when Dr. Jimmy starts throwing out his cryptic comments that we have to dissect, which I've enjoyed so much dissecting John Murdy's extremely cryptic comments on Twitter, and I look forward to working with Dr. Jimmy's cryptic comments very, very soon. So, like I said, I guess that's just uh, a rumor. Just a rumor. A rumor and nothing more. But what if? What if? So, once again, if you haven't checked out any of the other Horror Nights updaters on YouTube, definitely check them out. They're all really good. They're all really jam-up people, and they know what they're talking about, so check them out on uh, Horror Nights updaters on YouTube. I would definitely uh, recommend all of them, and obviously recommend Dr. Jimmy as well, so yes. I don't need to put over Dr. Jimmy, but Dr. Jimmy's awesome, so uh, you can check him out, Dokimo, D-O-C-K-I-M-O, and you can check him out on YouTube because Dr. Jimmy is awesome, and uh, he is going to come out with an awesome video on April 1st, my mom's birthday, mind you. We're going to get to find out everything about Halloween Horror Nights 24, and like I said, there's a little truth in the work. So, I hope you guys and girls out there enjoyed this video. It's kind of thrown together, but yeah, I think I got my point across. Everything's just a rumor until the summertime. Or until somebody decides, you know what, I'm just going to let this all out and forget it. I don't care. And then we'll know the truth. But until then, it's all rumors, it's all speculation. And it's all fun because we're having a great time. It's not even April yet and we're already talking seriously about Halloween Horror Nights. And actually, properties that most likely will come to the event. It's all fun. So... In the meantime, if you like these videos, tell your friends about them, leave a comment, do subscribe, and help spread the word about Pop. If you would uh, like to uh, like our Facebook fan page, it's Zero and Disney Pop. If you want to uh, be my friend on Facebook, it's Owen Disney. If you'd like to uh, follow me on Twitter, at Zero and Disney. Last but certainly not least, I want to send your thoughts, comments, queries, and opinions. Ideas you have for Halloween Horror Nights 24, maybe. Ideas you may have for Halloween Horror Nights 25, potentially, if the horror homecoming does happen. And if that does happen, and also includes John Carpenter's Halloween, which I believe it will, ideas you have for that. Or if you just want to talk Horror Nights with me, or just Universal or Disney in general, or if you want to talk wrestling with me, you're more than welcome to send me an email, surroundisney at gmail.com. In the meantime, thank you guys and girls out there for watching, and until tomorrow, boys and girls, that's all i got to say about that.